Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and I like to make thoughtful weekly videos about literature. Today I will be touching upon our good old YA dystopians from 2010 and seeing which ones are still relevant today and which ones are not. Now, the aim of this video is not for me to say like, oh, I liked this book, I didn't like this book. I mean, obviously I'm gonna say that to some extent. I wanna see which one of these would be a modern classic, you know, that people in 100, 200 years will be looking back on and saying, yes, the early 21st century, this book spoke to the psyche of the populace and captured something in this zeitgeist. The categories that I created were flop. I, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. You exist. It's a book, it exists. Story good, but not transcendental. This one is for books that I think were good, but don't really capture anything unique. So they won't really be talked about from the perspective of critiquing the culture. Then we have potential classics where it's good, it's talked about and relevant now, but I'm not yet sure if it's going to be a classic in the future. I'll just have to wait and see. And the last year is for books that I think will definitely be classics in a few years time. The first book that I will talk about is Divergent. In case you've been living under a rock, Divergent follows Tris Pryor as she finds out that she doesn't belong to any of the factions that most of her people belong to, each of the factions prioritizing one specific personality trait, whether it was bravery and dauntless, intelligence and erudite, or candor in, well, candor. But Triss finds out that she has all these personality traits, which makes her divergent. Personally, I really didn't like this book. However, I had my perspective on this book changed quite substantially by Leone from the book Leo, where she talked about how Divergent doesn't really aim to do this critique of society, but more so of the teenage brain. You know, as teenagers, we really like to classify ourselves or put ourselves into boxes of, oh, I'm the the cottage gore girl, or the emo kid, or the band kid, or things like that. And what Divergent does is it shows the teenagers that you can be everything and that, and that you don't need to put yourself into a box or an aesthetic to have value. And I think that's very interesting, especially in the context of this TikTok culture that we are having right now where people do classify themselves or align themselves a lot with specific aesthetics and images online. So for that reason, for that reason, I'm going to put Divergent into potential classic. I, I really cannot give it any higher than that because I just, I really don't like this book and I don't think it's well written or executed, but the idea is there, okay? And so I'm going to give it points for the idea. Now, a book series that I absolutely loved back in the day, and it was the Gone series by Michael Grant. This series follows the events of what happens after all the adults and all people over the age of 15 disappear from a town. And there's this barrier erected around the town and so no one leaves. However, when you turn 15, you disappear as well. I actually wonder if for this one, Michael Grant didn't take any inspiration from Lord of the Flies, because what we see very quickly is that once the limitations brought upon the children by the adults are removed, things start to get quite animalistic. And there's a lot here about the nature of humanity and nature versus nurture, conflicts between the rich, the poor, the bullies, the bullied. But at its core, I think that this is a story that is very character focused and plot focused. And I don't think that, even though I love it, I don't think the point was to really make a critique of anything. I think it's mostly just to have a really, really great time. And so for that reason, even though it hurts me, I'm going to put it into the story is good, but it's not transcendental. Next is Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Now I'm really curious, are you going to be watching the adaptation that's coming out today with Joey King? Um, because I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50 on this, but I'm, I'm curious what the sentiment is amongst you guys. Uglies follows Tally in this world where everyone before they turn 16 is considered an ugly and that only when you turn 16 you get this cosmetic surgery and you become a pretty. Something that I really remember standing out to me when I was reading this book is the way that Tally describes herself and other people around her. There are all these like focuses on little tiny imperfections that as a reader, I kind of got the impression that, you know, for me, those things are normal. Like for example, if I was a character in this book describing myself, I would really highly focus on the fact that, that my left masseter is larger than my right masseter and that's a huge insecurity that I have. But it's also normal because our facial muscles are not 
equal. Like it's very hard, if not impossible, to be perfectly symmetrical when it comes to muscle mass on both sides due to anatomical differences, exertion that we use. For me, those are things that most of the time, at least I can kind of look past and, you know, other people have other imperfections. And so I'm kind of okay with this. But for Tally, like her growing up, she's always told like, you are ugly, you are ugly, you are ugly. And so, yeah, those descriptions that she has of herself, of her friends, those really stood out to me. And then when we meet the pretties, they're all perfectly symmetrical, perfect, beautiful. You know, like the plastic surgery phase that everyone is like getting the same plastic surgeries to look the same. That's kind of how I imagined the pretties in the uglies. Personally, this is another book that really didn't hit for me. There's this character called David. Don't remember too much about him, but I remember that I hated him. However, I think that especially now, again, talking about the TikTok cultures and things like that affecting young minds. I think that beauty standards now are higher than ever. I mean, there's people my age getting preventative Botox and there's 12 year olds in Sephora worrying about getting wrinkles. Like girl, you're 12. And so for that reason, I do really think that the topics covered in the uglies are super, super, super important and super relevant as well. However, I cannot give it that mark of modern classic because I just, I don't think that the story is there enough to back up the ideas, but I don't know, maybe the TV show changed some of that. I don't know, I'm curious, I'm curious. Now, before I start talking about Cinder by Marissa Meyer, there's two things you need to know about me. The first is that I'm a sucker for retellings, whether it's fairy tales, classics, I just, I love seeing these classic stories reinterpreted in different settings. And I also think that this is one of those you know, books from this time that really, really holds its own and is so good. And I think loads of people that haven't picked it up should pick it up. This book takes place in New Beijing as a deadly plague ravages the streets. And we follow Cinder, who is this android mechanic. She also has a terrible relationship with her stepmom because she is very much blamed for the illness of her stepsister. However, there is a deadly plague going on. I think there are some relevant things here, especially with the plague and people putting blame on each other, people that they probably don't. There was a lot of anger and hatred towards certain groups of people because of the pandemic. And for that reason, I do think that there are elements of it that are current. However, I think for the most part, the aim of this book was once again, more so focused on the relationships of Cinder and Kai, and then later on in the series, Scarlet, Wolf, Crest, Thorn. I don't think that really the commentary was the main point. It's definitely there, but I do not think that it is transcendental. Unfortunately, next we have our first flop, and that is the testing. <laughs> From what I remember, this is basically like the old fourth wing, except it was in a post-apocalyptic sort of thing. Now, I haven't read fourth wing, but from what I know, it's like uh, the school setting and there are all these tests and you can die in any of them. And that's pretty much the same case with the testing. Like think SATs, but they're deadly. Again, I think the point of the story was more so the intrigue because of the setting, the love triangle that kind of starts up. But I also don't think that the story really holds its own like Gone or Cinder. And so, and to be honest, it's also quite forgettable. So because of that, we have our first flop. Sorry. Next, we have The Giver, and honestly, we all know where The Giver is going, right? This book is about Jonas, who at the ceremony of 12, when he turns 12, he is ascribed to become the receiver of memory and is working with this elderly man known as The Giver. And The Giver shares his memories or the memories of really the entire population uh, with Jonas of things like sledding, of color, feeling. And it's really all about the importance of experience, individuality. It also challenges the idea that ignorance is bliss and makes us question what is the point of living a pleasant but ultimately empty life. I mean, let's be real, this book is a classic already and if you haven't read it, then definitely do. I Also, I need more people to read the sequels because too many of you are stopping at The Giver. As a whole, this tetralogy really paints a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture and gives so much food for thought. And these books are super short, so honestly, what are you guys doing? Pick these up right now. 
But from a modern classic, we go to another book um, called Matched. And now this is another one that I'm sorry, but it has to go into flop. This is a book where the dystopian elements are mostly there to cause conflict for the main character's love triangle. And essentially the point of the book is that there is this like magical algorithm or whatever that chooses your perfect match. But at this matching ceremony, when you're matched to your perfect person, uh, before her best friend's face appears, there's a flash of another person in. And so suddenly our main character is caught between these two guys and you know how the story progresses from there. To be honest, I really don't think that this book says anything interesting. I think that the first book is like, okay, super disappointing, but you, okay, it exists. Um, and then the next two books are honestly one of the worst things I've ever read in my life. And so maybe I'm a bit biased, but I really think that <laughs> even if I wasn't biased, I don't think this book offers that much. So for that reason, flop. Next, I'm going to talk about the selection, which does a similar thing where it's The Bachelor, but it's dystopian, okay. There's a fair bit in the series about the prince really not knowing anything that is happening in his country in reality, or not knowing really anything that happens beyond the borders of the castle, and how he is able to live in this blissful ignorance, whereas his subjects suffer. I think there is an argument to be made that it does touch upon about privilege and how that changes your point of view, and what are the benefits of educating yourself on the struggles of other people. However, because this is such a small part of the series and I think it could have been done better, but also like, I'm not gonna delude myself. This wasn't really the aim of the series. I'm going to put this into You Exist. And to conclude our idea of books dealing with love and the dystopian future, now I'll talk about Delirium by Lauren Oliver. And the entire catch here is that what if love was a virus? And our main character, guess what? falls in love, you guessed it. <laughs> I think this book was like super, super popular at the time. Everyone was talking about it. However, when's the last time you heard this book mentioned? Yeah, didn't think so. So um, once again, I'm sorry, I'm being so harsh. I'm such a hater, but it's going into flop. Moving on, The Hunger Games. If you disagree that this is already a modern classic, you're wrong. I'm sorry, you're wrong. The way this book and series have penetrated pop culture is honestly astounding. If I say something like, oh, I volunteer as tribute, everyone knows the reference. And the fact that it is still so popular so many years after its original release, I think really says something as well. I mean, just look at the success of A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and the hype for Sunrise on the Reaping, which I will be there for that book day one because Suzanne Collins is an author that I really, really trust when it comes to exploring interesting ideas. People even were using the Hunger Games to critique the Met Gala last year, comparing celebrities' outfits to the ones that we see in the movies in the Capitol. It says a lot about excess. It says a lot about distribution of wealth. You can analyze it through so many lenses, like theories on the nature of humanity and violence versus entertainment, propaganda even. And I think that people years from now, when reading this book, will get a really good idea of the struggles that we are facing and have been facing for these past couple of years, just in general. Next is Article 5, a book that was, I think, like a blip in the system. <laughs> Once again, I'm sorry, but this one's going into flop because it really doesn't say anything new or interesting or anything that The Handmaid's Tale hasn't already said. Next, we come to James Dashner's phenomenon known as the Maze Runner. Now, the Maze Runner is an interesting case because I want to know what happened with the movies. Did the Death Cure actually ever come out? Like, I want to know. I want to know. There's so much drama surrounding that. And also, I remember being traumatized when watching uh, The Scorch Trials. So yeah, very fond memories on, of that. But I remember liking those first two movies more than the book. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting myself distracted again. The Maze Runner takes place in a maze. Well, that's so crazy. And the plot kicks off where in this male exclusive maze, suddenly a girl shows up and they can't handle it. <laughs> All jokes aside, this series grows into something that is much more interesting and ultimately talks about the extent of experimentation, uh, the limits of science, um, ethics, and things like that. I think it takes a while in getting there and the story is not always interesting while getting there. And perhaps the conversation that is had is not as interesting either. 
However, because I really, really liked that first movie, I'm just, I'm gonna give it bonus points. I'm gonna say that it exists because it's definitely not a flop. And the story, I think it, it's fine, but it doesn't really reach the heights of Gone or Cinder for me. And the conversation, it's kind of there, but it takes us a while to really get there. And so because of that, it's just going into You Exist. Next, we have a series that I really, really loved back in the day, uh, and it was the Legend series by Mary Lou. And now, oh my gosh, after finishing Champion, uh, that last book in this trilogy, that was one of the first times I had a mental breakdown <laughs> when finishing a series. It's essentially uh, the story of June and Day. June being our female lead and she's super intelligent. She's the prodigy trained for these military circles. And Day is our street rat, street kid. I think ultimately this series is more concerned with just being a really good story with good characters. And it it really does pack uh, an intense emotional punch. At least it did for like 13 year old Vera. And so because of that, I'm going in to put it into story good, but not transcendental. The Fifth Wave, another of our failed franchises, if I may. I don't know, I'm, I'm on the verge of putting it into flop versus you exist. This is much more post-apocalyptic than it is dystopian. All in all, I think that this book is quite forgettable. Like even when we look at the dialogues that we're having, who remembers the movie? Do you? No, you don't. So, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm being mean today and I'm putting it in flop. Next, we have Shatter Me, which I think is Book Talk's darling at the moment, so please don't crucify me. But this book is about Juliet and she was locked up for however many days because whoever she touches dies. And so that's why she can't kiss anyone, she can't hold anyone, she can't hug anyone. Honestly, I have really good memories of reading the series, but once again, it is one where I think there was so much more about the conflict. The things that I remember most about the series are the characters like Kenji, I think his name was, um, Warner, of course, and how annoying Adam became. And so I think that I'm gonna put it into You Exist because I don't really think there's anything that this book says that would make it into a classic. I don't think that's the point of it, but it is a good time, especially if you're closer to the start of your reading journey. I don't think we will really look back on this and say, yes, this is a modern classic that spoke to the public consciousness. Then we have Red Queen, which I have beef with because I think this was one of the first books that I really hated. Um, and so because of that, I'm putting it in flop. Like I hated this book. I tried to continue to glass sword and I wanted to die. It was honestly such a painful experience. I wanted to claw my eyes out. Honestly, I don't even know if I can put this as a dystopian because there are so many magical elements and I think that's what I was more focused on. But there is, I guess it does talk a little bit about prejudice because there's the red bloods and I think like the gold bloods or silver bloods or something like that. And depending which color you bleed, that changes your position in society and your value in society. And our main character essentially bleeds like the special color. And yeah, and then there's obviously a love triangle because everyone was doing a love triangle at this point, but it's just not really executed well, it's not interesting, and it's boring, I'm sorry, flop. Now, Among the Hidden, the one middle grade that I included in this list because I think it is so good. This series is about a society where there's population control and there's the population control police, and each family is allowed to have only two children, but our main character, Luke, is a third child. And the first book chronicles his first experience meeting another third child. And I think this book was actually inspired, at least in part, with the uh, population control rules in China from a few years back. The core of it is is always the population control and the fears that arise out of that and um, how your development is impacted by that, relationships are impacted by that, families are impacted by that. And because it is inspired at least in part by real world policies, I think that it's going to go into potential classic. See, I think that this would be a very good potential children's classic. The penultimate book that I'll be talking about is Slated by Terry Terry. A uh, dystopian that kind of flew under the radar for some, but not for me because I was obsessed with this book back in the day. We follow our main character, Kyla, who back in the day was told that she was a terrorist, but her memory was wiped, so she has to relearn how to walk, how to... There's a scene where she's washing the dishes and she cuts herself because she doesn't remember that knives are sharp. I think I'm going to put this into You Exist. I found the idea surrounding the reformation of criminals in this book to be quite interesting, uh, at the time at least, as well as the conversations around nature versus nurture, which I really wasn't really 
aware of that that was a conversation when I read this. This was a very impactful book to me, but, but I think that given the perspective of time, it hasn't really held up as much as I hoped that it would. But then we get to the last book, which is the fucking Slay of the Century. And when I say Slay, I actually mean Glean. And it is Scythe by Neil Schusterman, my fucking king. I love this series. I think, personally, it's better than The Hunger Games. Perhaps having it in this ranking is slightly misleading because it isn't really a dystopian, it's a utopian. Everything in this world is perfect. Now, you do have to suspend your disbelief a little bit for this, but imagine that everything is run by this perfect AI, perfect, perfect AI called the Thunderhead. This society has solved everything from death to satisfaction rates in life. People jump off of buildings just to get the adrenaline high and then they get picked up, healed, and they're fine. The only way a death can be permanent is if you get gleaned by a scythe. And scythes are these orders of people who are supposed to be trained in the ways of killing. They have different uh, styles. Some people do it via statistics. Some people recreate ancient disasters. But if you get killed by a scythe, that's it, you're dead. And it's this form of population control because in the society, they believe that death is something internally human and so shouldn't be dictated by the AI because if the AI kills, well, it's not a perfect AI anymore, it's an evil one. I actually had the opportunity to meet Neil Schusterman in May and it was the most unreal experience of my life. He honestly handled me so well. I loved picking his brain about his inspirations, his creative process, and hearing him speak, I was astounded once again by his mind and seeing it work in real time is something that I'll forever be grateful for. So, so kind as well. For now, it is definitely too recent to be considered a modern classic, but give it a few years, guys. Give it a few years because it's so good, especially with the invention of actual AI. I think there's so much more that people can reap from this series now than ever before. Of course, remember the intended audience is a little bit younger, but guys, Trust me, so, so good. That is all that I have for you today. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree with my choices? Are you going to see the uglies this weekend? Let me know. Anyways, that's all from me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.